We had Melvin Hunt throwing chairs at our guys. I tried to slam the board down. Uh, we, we tried everything. We pulled all the tricks out. It didn't work. We just didn't have it. I think the best thing about tonight is we didn't waste a good game. No one had a great game, so we didn't waste anybody's good game on tonight. Uh, we stunk together, and we just move on. It was easy. Just move on. I was hoping there were zero questions. I really was. I was hoping you guys all kind of agreed. I mean, there was just zero questions, and you guys just like, yeah, there's nothing really to ask. You guys stunk. I, mean, I do. I do agree for the record. But yeah, uh, I'm. Thank you. I love <laughs> honesty. You guys know I'm an honest person. I love honesty. What, what What do you attribute that lack of energy to? Is it the back of the? Back you know, I, I think tonight I'll actually say we were young. And I don't say that much. We were young. And, you know, I told the guys, I think Chicago, their motivation is they blew a game last night. They were up 18. Uh, they lead the NBA in blown leads already. Um, they know they could have won last night, should have won last night, and they blew it. So they came here knowing we, we, we let one get away. Let's not let this one get away. We were the opposite. We had a great win last night, and we just showed up. And I, I think we had a young, young approach to tonight's game. And... You know, I knew we weren't going to get back in it offensively. I, I was hoping we'd get back in it defensively, and we were awful defensively tonight. Coach, you always talk about teachable moments. Is there a teachable moment from a game like this? It is. I, I, I asked the guys to go home. I asked how many of them actually watched the games after. As coaches, it's our job. We all watch our games after and evaluate it and break it down and show the clips. We're not going to show any of these clips because um, we'll just move forward. Uh, we have a day off tomorrow, I'll play Friday. But I asked them to watch the film and evaluate the care factor. How many of the guys showed that they cared tonight? And um, that's easy. You, you can watch and see there was just bad body language. Guys weren't ready. You know, they shot the three well. We gave up strong side threes, which you don't do in the NBA. Um, we just didn't care. We didn't have the care factor today. And I think that's just a, it's a teachable moment because it's our first back-to-back. And this is where you really got to grind and dig in. Um, this is similar to what we're going to experience on the road. They're not a lot. We got one back-to-back -back on the road on this trip. But every game is, you know, on the road, West Coast, first time out, similar to a back-to-back. -back. But this is our first back-to-back, -back and we failed. Cam struggled tonight, particularly handling the ball. Um, what is you know, he single out, Cam? Well... No, <laughs> everyone struggled, but Cam did struggle handling the ball tonight. Um, what do you need? To, what does he need to do to kind of slow down and get comfortable? Yeah, you know, sometimes you try and beat people with moves, and that's not how this this game is. You know, everyone's quick and everyone's fast, and everyone, you know, you see a spin, you're taught to make a defensive play, and so. He's trying to beat people with moves, and when he turns his back, there's a defender there, or there's someone beating them or cutting them off. Um, it's really you, you beat people with readiness. You know, if you got a driving lane, you, you attack on a closeout. Um, guy is way. It's penetration. And so he's worried about beating guys with moves right now as opposed to making the right read. If hands are down, shoot it, let it fly. I don't care. Uh, if guys running out, you drive it. And I keep, you guys may hear me a lot. I'm saying downhill. That just means get attack, attack. You know, we, we're six for 30 from three. That's not working for us. We got into the bonus with about eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. We, we want to attack downhill. And we're just learning how to do that and take advantage of those situations. We had a great situation. Eight and a half in the third quarter. We're down 14, down 15. We can get back in the game with no time going off the clock. And we settled and we couldn't make those plays. And that's really the teachable moment that we had from tonight. Uh, coach, it seemed that the Bulls were really showing their bigs high against pick and rolls, and that's something the Hawks are starting to see a lot, especially Trey Young and high pick and rolls. Um, how do you go about counteracting? Nothing new. That's been that's been day one. Uh, we saw three out of five games in preseason. We've talked about it all year. Um, the the biggest adjustment we'll always have to make is get off the basketball quick. And when you get off the basketball quick, it's four on three behind, and we don't know who the four, you know, who's initiating at that point. But we have four on three advantage, and and we have NBA players that all have the ability to make a play for someone else. Um, but we knew we knew that beforehand. We knew they were going to corral and blitz him. And really, when we played him in preseason, they blitzed everyone. They, that's just that's their nature. They hit first, and we were on our heels all night.
Coach, it's easy to talk about all the things that you guys did wrong. We saw there were some bright spots tonight, you know, particularly no, there Jabari wasn't. Park. There, Jabari? No, there wasn't. Jabari, he had a couple of solid plays, I'd say. I mean, what are some positives that you can take away from this? I mean, I guess it was a bad game, but how do you go moving forward? What are some positives that you do tell this young core? That the game is over. <laughs> That's the best thing. I, I didn't know how to speed the game up. He called two timeouts in the fourth quarter. I'm looking at him like, well, you don't need to sub. Just let it go. Somebody's going to foul in the next couple seconds. Um, that's the positive. This game is over, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Sometimes you just got to, you just, there's no positives. You can't, hey, you had 18 points, Jabbar. He had 18 points last night. We won. We had 18 points tonight. Easy. That's easy. He can do that in his sleep. Um, there's no positives. We, Nah. Well, not to dwell too much on this Jeez, game, Coach. John, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, the 24 turnovers, and a lot of them were unforced. Yeah. Like, if there's one thing... A lot, the a game, lot of them were... Go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm just going to say, like, if there was one thing from this game, is that the one that sticks in you the most? You know, the worst part about tonight's turnovers were we were on the break. And, you know, Ty had two when no one was defending the guy that was receiving the pass and he just threw it across half court. And we had a couple on the break where we were just trying to advance the basketball and, and like, I don't know where they were. They were just unforced turnovers, unforced errors. kind of summed up, our turnover summed up our night. We, we didn't have to turn those over. Those were opportunities we could have created some easy baskets and we didn't. And, and they, they were just unexplainable. And so that... You know, I, I like to say because they blitz, a lot of the turnovers were because of the blitz. I don't think they were. I think a lot of them were because we got steals and we were out on a break. We just played in the crowd or held on to the basketball a little bit too long. Um, those are the frustrating ones because you, you, you think you can get a break just from getting a turnover and maybe get an easy basket. Uh, Trey had a little bit. I can't of believe it. you guys have this many questions. I really don't. This is unbelievable. I'll make it, I really, I'll make it, I, this is unbelievable. I'll make it really quick. I thought I was going to come in here and like, I have nothing and you guys, we agree. Let's move on. And I got something going on on TV tonight. Really quick. Uh, Trey had a little bit of a quiet night. Was that just they weren't falling from three or were they doing anything in particular to contain him while? 0 for 8 is not falling from 3. It's just 0 for 8. And, it, it, you know, the biggest problem with Chicago is he dropped 49 on them last year. Mm -hmm. And they, they're they not going to forget that. Jim Boyle is not going to forget that. Chris Dunn's not going to forget that. Trey got a tech barking at Chris Dunn last time we played him, um, letting him know he dropped 49 on them. So th they're not going to let Trey have an easy game the rest of his career. Chicago will never let Trey have an easy game the rest of his career. He may get a tech in every game that we play. Uh, there may be a confrontation. He will be blitzed every single time he's in a pick and roll. If he hits a shot, he probably won't get another shot off. And that's just because of what happened last year. Uh, and so it's no surprise. We, we have to be better. He's got he's to gotta learn with the blitz how to get off of it quick. Um, his teammates have to be in that ready position to attack when we're four on three behind it. But, you know, this is, this is when you have young players and, and people talk about sophomore slump. Obviously, Trey is not in a sophomore slump. But people have sophomore slumps because they can't adjust to what happened the first time. And so you go through a year, and whatever success you had, you want to grow from it. Some people don't adjust, and they don't grow from it. We already know how Chicago's going to play Trey the rest of his career. Now it's a matter of how can we help him adjust to blitzes, corral blitzes, denials, physicality, every time we play Chicago, just because he had a 49-point game against them last year, as they should. I'm almost afraid to ask the question, Coach. I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, as one of the primary leaders, though he's young, obviously talking about Trey, uh, are you having a specific conversation with him in regards to how to forget games like this and how to just kind of pick up and with him and the team to, to kind of move forward and put it past him? No, I mean, forgetting is not... It's not the point. Like I said, I asked the guys to watch tonight and just evaluate their performance. You, you want to remember tonight more than anything. We'll move on because we don't play Chicago for a while. We, we'll, we have a day off tomorrow. We have a new appoint, opponent. And Sacramento was hard for us last year. They're, they're one of the toughest teams that we played from a matchup standpoint with Sacramento last year. Um, both of the games that we played against those guys was, was a speed ordeal, and, and that was tough. So... Don't forget 
Chicago, understand this is how he's going to play. They're going to play him this way every single time. We move forward when we come back to Chicago. We'll show the film then.